Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach from electricalexamcoach.com. And this is lesson 9.5 in our video series. And in this lesson, we're going to be learning about bundling adjustments and ambient temperature corrections. These are a subset of ampacity. And remember, ampacity is just how many amps the wire can handle safely under its conditions of use without exceeding its temperature rating. Bundling adjustments work like this. When wires are bundled, like in a pipe, for example, they have less ability to dissipate the heat and it reduces how many amps the wire can handle safely. Ambient temperature corrections are like this. If wires are run in an extremely hot ambient temperature, it reduces how many amps the wire can handle safely. We're going to learn about these one at a time. Let's get to it. Let's dive into bundling adjustments. Let's take a look at our primary opacity table. I want you to turn there now. And these values down below this table are true if, well, the question is if what? If you look at the paragraph above the table, the one that I said we would come back and look at later, it's got some parameters there. It says, hey, these are the ampacities of these conductors. If, and the first if that we're gonna look at is if there are not more than three current carrying conductors inside of a cable, pipe, or even buried in the earth together. Let's take a look at it. Let's imagine that we have a piece of conduit here and we pulled in a black, red, blue, and an equipment grounding conductors. What this table is saying is that those ampacity values listed down below in this table are true as long as you have not more than three current carrying conductors in a cable, pipe, or raceway. If you do have more than that, then we have to do what's called a bundling adjustment. Let's learn about our bundling adjustment table. Head to this respective table depending on your code cycle. When we get there, we're gonna find that it's very easy to read. Reading all of our tables from top to bottom, left to right, we're gonna start here on the left-hand side and this is our number of current carrying conductors. Let's imagine we have this conduit and we end up with six current carrying conductors. So we're gonna slide down until we find our range and we fall in the four to six range. Then we need to slide over and find our adjustment factor, which is just another demand factor, which is something you're very familiar with at this point in the program. Let's imagine we have a wire that's 50 amps. We take that 50 amp wire and we multiply it by 0 0.80, which was our demand factor. And we end up with a wire that is now only good for 40 amps. What they're saying is because the amount of wires inside of this pipe or cable that the wire cannot dissipate the heat safely. So you have to reduce how many amps the wire can handle. So the new allowable ampacity of this wire is only 40 amps. Up until this point, we've had all hot conductors inside of our conduit. But what happens if we add in a neutral? Is it considered a current carrying conductor? What about grounding conductors? Are they considered current carrying conductors? Well, let's learn how to count conductors now. Now let's learn about current carrying conductor counting because we're only going to be counting the current carrying conductors. You may get a question on your exam that gives you the number of conductors. That's easy. You're going to go to the tables and do the math, but you may get a question on your exam that asks you in a scenario of wires, how many of them are current carrying conductors. The first one's easy, all ungrounded conductors. All of the hots are going to be considered current carrying conductors under normal circumstances. The second one is the neutral of a line to neutral load, meaning if we have a light bulb and it draws one amp on a 120 volt circuit, there's going to be one amp going in on the hot and there's going to be one amp flowing back on the neutral. So it is as well a current carrying conductor. Same thing with a three phase four wire neutral. We're not going to be dinking around trying to calculate the unbalanced load. We're just going to count it as a current carrying conductor. Then the three phase nonlinear neutral load. Nonlinear loads come from large fluorescent lighting or from large computer data centers. You're going to count its neutral as well. Grounding conductors, no, they do not count. And that's one of the easiest ones. You don't have to count those as a current carrying conductor. If we have no adjustment will be made if we have nipples that are 24 inches or less. Let's imagine we have a panel over here on the right hand side. 
We put a panel on the left side. We want to run a short nipple that's 24 inches or less. This does not count in our bundling adjustment, which is a thing of beauty because if it did, you would have to derate all of your conductors that went in between, which would make you have to put very large wire to maybe jump just some 12 gauge circuits from a house panel over to a generator. Let's learn about our last component. There are no adjustments for sleeves emerging from grade that are not longer than 10 feet. And let me show you a real world scenario where this might play out. Let's imagine that you have this house and you're doing a parallel 400 amp underground service. You use two sets of triplex running over to the house. And let's imagine that now you need to stub up at grade. You've separated your triplex in the dirt so you don't have to worry about this bundling adjustment, but you need to stub up now to the panel. The question is, do you have to do bundling adjustment on that short stub? And the answer is no, up to 10 feet. So when you go to stub up, you put those all in one conduit, you are allowed to stub that up no more than 10 feet, and you do not have to do a bundling adjustment. Let's get to it. Just a quick recap. We're gonna count all ungrounded hots. We're gonna count most neutrals. We're not gonna count grounding conductors. There's no adjustments for nipples 24 inches or less, and there are no adjustments for sleeves emerging from grade not longer than 10 feet. Now let's talk about choosing from the right column. And this is the last step before we're actually able to start doing questions. Up until this point, we've always chosen, most of the time, from the 75 degree C column. Now there'll be times that we choose from the 60, and this is where we start choosing from the 90. 99% of the time you're gonna choose from the 90 anytime that you're doing bundling adjustments or temperature corrections. We're gonna choose from that 90 degree C column. We're getting ready to do practice questions and you'll understand that more fully as we proceed. What is the allowable ampacity of a number four copper conductor with nine current carrying conductors in a piece of one inch EMT? Step one, we're gonna verify that our conductors are listed in the 90 degree C column. We head to our primary opacity table on the copper side and we make sure that THHN is listed. If it's not listed there for the purpose of exam prep, I just want you to go to whatever column that it is listed in and do the math. Now we're going to find our starting opacity in the 90 degree C column. We head to our primary opacity table. It's wanting a number four conductor, so we start on the left hand side. We're gonna come over and we're gonna tee off with the 90 degree C column, and we're gonna find out that it is 95 amps. That's our starting ampacity. Now, we must check for demand factors. Are there more than three current carrying conductors? There are, so we must apply the demand factor. We're gonna head to either table depending on what code cycle you're in. It is our bundling adjustment factor table. And when we get there, we're gonna start on the left-hand side, we come down and find our number of current carrying conductors. Then we cross over and find our demand factor. Now we can get to work. We take our starting ampacity, we multiply it by the demand factor, and that gives us a new allowable ampacity of 66.5 amps. A wire that was once good for 95 amps because of it being bundled in this pipe is now only good for 66.5, and we select A. Great job. What is the allowable ampacity of a one-aught XHHW copper conductor with 13 current carrying conductors in a piece of two inch RMC? Step one, we're gonna verify that our conductors are listed in the 90 degree C column. When we head there, we find that XHHW is listed. So we're gonna find our starting ampacity. We head to our primary ampacity table. We're on the copper side. We start until we find one-aught on the left then we cross all the way over to the 90 and we find that it's 170 amps. Now we check for demand factors. Are there more than three current carrying conductors? There are, so we must apply the adjustment factors that are listed in these tables. We go to our adjustment factor table. We're gonna start on the left-hand side and find our number of current carrying conductors. Then we cross over and find that it's 50%. We take that and do our math. We take our starting ampacity multiplied by the bundling adjustment factor. Then we're gonna have a new reduced ampacity of 85 amps. Great job. What is the allowable ampacity 
of a number six THHN aluminum conductor with six current carrying conductors in a piece of three quarter inch EMT. Step one, we're gonna verify that our conductors are listed in the 90 degree C column. We head there now, but we're on the aluminum side because the question requested aluminum conductors and we find that THHN is there. Now we find our starting impacity in the 90 degree C column. We head to our primary impacity table on the aluminum side and we slide down until we find a number six. Then we're gonna come over and we're gonna cross over and find that our starting impacity is 55 amps. But we must check for demand factors. Are there more than three current carrying conductors? There sure are. So we're gonna head to our bundling adjustment factor table. When we get there, we're gonna find our range of conductors. Then we're gonna cross over to the demand factor. Now, let's just do the math. We take our starting impacity multiplied by 0 0.80, and that gives us a new reduced allowable impacity of 44 amps. Let's get to it. That's the end of lesson 9.5. I wanna let you know that you're doing a great job keep up the good work, keep grinding. If you need anything from me, whether it's mentoring, coaching, or any way that I can help you in life or business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com or shoot me a call or a text at 423-895-3247. If you don't get me, leave a voicemail and shoot a text. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.